Hey team, Luke of Practical Machinist, back here for another excellent episode of The Lathe Lab. In last episode, we started diving our toes into the deep end of CNC programming, specifically on a lathe. We're gonna continue on that trajectory. We're gonna keep walking down that path. Today, we're gonna talk about canned cycles. One of them in particular, in fact, we're gonna go over in this video, G92. G92 is a repetitive cutting cycle, a repetitive threading cycle. And what the can cycle does, it saves you time from having to program every line of that particular thread. And you just, what, and we're gonna go over all of it in the video. You're gonna input what you need, your approach, your endpoint, your feed, your pitch, your depth of cut, all that stuff. And it's gonna come out and dump out that perfect thread for you. It'll save you time in program at longhand. It'll save you time in modifying the program if you have to. That's what we're gonna dive into on this video. Before we get into the nitty gritty, what I'd like you to do, subscribe to the channel. After you watch this video and enjoy it thoroughly, hit up the rest of Practical Machinist content. Great stuff on milling, great stuff on turning, shop tours, machine maintenance, EDM. There's all of it there. What I'm gonna show you right now, we're gonna pop a little bloop up on the screen of an actual G92 code. You're gonna see that momentarily, and then we're gonna dive into what does it mean? What does this mean and how do I program it myself? Let's get to it. All right, team, let's proceed by rolling on dubs. You saw what a G92 looks like? That exact program that you just saw it's the same one that I'm running here, and we're going to go over later on once we cover everything on how you achieve your puzzle pieces to your G92. There's four bits of information that you need to acquire before you program a G92. Your approach point, your ending point, your feed or pitch, and your step-down value. How much material are you going to remove per cut, and how many passes total? So let's start with the approach point. The major diameter on this part that we're programming is about 1.615. Our approach position in the program that you just saw a moment ago was Z negative 0.2 and X 1.9. I like to start about 200 thousandths away from the face in Z, and I wanna try to start about 100 to 200 per side away in X. So our 1.9 and our Z.2 value will do. Hopefully everyone understands what the benefit of a approach position is, or should I say the, the necessary value in it. You don't wanna wrap it up to Z0, X0. You're gonna smash the part. You have to be some amount of distance away when you're programming. That's your approach. Whatever that might be, shops could vary. For me, I like to be 200 away in Z and a couple hundred per side in X roughly. The exact value doesn't matter, just as long as you give yourself enough room for the G92 to get ready to run. It's gonna cut, reset, and go back to that same point. The second thing that you need is your ending point. The part, the ending point that we chose was Z.630. The reason that we chose that is on the print, from the face to the shoulder, was about 650,000, 650 to 690. So we chose Z630 to go right in the middle of the ending point up to the shoulder. Your ending point is gonna be based on your customer print. There's no easy way to say, oh, well, you need to go 0.2 and 0.2 or 0.5, 0.5. If you have a one inch thread, you gotta go one inch. If you have a two inch thread, you gotta go two inches, so on and so forth. Also, it depends on what's at the end of the thread. If it's a through bore with a through thread, you can go way past the overall length of the part. If there's a step on the bottom or a shoulder, you have to stop before that. So that's up to you based on your print. The third thing we wanna know that's very critical is our feed rate or our pitch. Your feed rate for your G92 is going to be the pitch of your thread. The thread that we just cut is a one and five ace 12. So it's a 12 pitch thread. One divided by your pitch equals your feed. In this case, one divided by 12 equals 0 0.0833. That's our feed rate. Your feed is your pitch. If it's metric, say it's a um, M12 by one and a half, 
Your, your pitch is one and a half. Your metric pitch. You convert that to standard or there's some fan controls that you can uh, put in. I think a G20 or G21, but I don't do that way. I just convert my metric over to standard. Whatever the pitch is, that's your feed rate. So those first three things are pretty easy to understand. The last one is your depths of cut. We're gonna, like I say, we're going to see that program again, or if you want to rewind back and take a look at it. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine or ten passes on X. Once you call up your G92, you're going to go to your approach, you're going to determine your ending point, and you're going to give it your X. So you're going to cut down repeatedly, and it's going to start here, end here, you're going to take a cut in X, it's going to go back to your start point. You're going to give it another X, as was in the program, it's going to go to the ending point, cut that X, go back to the beginning point. Over and over and over and over, as long as you keep giving it X di dimensions, it will cut that. So I know everyone's asking, how do you know what to cut, what's your depth of cut, your thread? That is when we use these sheets, which are on here. We're going to blurb them up right now so you can take a better look, then we'll continue. Okay, now that we saw that, what I would recommend you do, either take that form there that was just up, screenshot it, or get a hold of your manufacturer. Whoever your tooling manufacturers that you buy your threading tools from, they're going to have that same data. We call it thread turning, cutting data. It is basically industry standard on all standard threads that are 60 degree included angles, metric or standard. There's gonna be a certain amount of depths that they recommend. Now I'm gonna say something uh, tongue in cheek here that a lot of people are not gonna like. I don't hold fast and true to that, to the book, to the thousand. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's a reason why. One of the reasons is, say you program and touch off your tool, blah, blah, blah. That first part you make on your thread, it's not going to be good. But rarely it is, unless you gotta make one part. If you're in a production shop making thousands, you're gonna have to vary that and offset it to dial it in when you're on your setup. So I don't break it down to the 10th, you know, 0.00012 or 0.0014 per depth. I don't do it that way. It's really not that critical. It's a good starting point to determine how many passes you have to take. Here's our depth of cut. So now we're gonna dive right in on that. On this particular job, it was a 12 pitch thread. It's standard. It was a 12 pitch external thread. So what you're gonna do when you get that sheet, <coughs> excuse me, you're gonna find out <coughs> On the side column over here, what is your TPI? What is your pitch? Then it's going to say, what's your total depth? Then below that, it's going to say how much depth of cut they want per side. So again, on this one, our major is 1.615 about. That is where you're going to start your number on that major. So say you have a 16 pitch thread, they're recommended taking 20 thousandths. 18, 15, 14, 12, 10, 8, 7. The deeper you get in that thread, the lighter depth your cut you're going to want to take because you're engaging more of the insert. Once you have that thread cutting data form, you're going to determine each value and subtract it from the previous one. So if it's saying 20 thou per side depth of cut, that's 40 on a diameter. You're going to subtract that from the major diameter. That's your first X. Then the next one, you're going to subtract it from that X. Then the next one from that X. The next one from that X. So you're going to slowly, on an external thread, you're going to slowly move down in a diameter until you achieve your pitch diameter. And then when you make the part, you're going to offset it to get it to fit your gauges or your pitch diameter or whatever you have to verify the part. So just to reiterate one last time, is this a big step? Your ending, your ending point and your starting point, you can look at your print to determine. Your feed rate is your pitch. That's pretty easy. But this last part can be kind of complicated. You determine your major on an external thread, your major. On an internal thread, your minor. That is your starting point. 
Then you're going to find the numbers from this thread cutting data form on the pitch. It's going to have your depth of cut that you want. You're going to subtract that first from the major. You're going to get an X value. Then you're going to find the next number in the list. You're going to get another one. Subtract it. Subtract down, 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 down. Keep subtracting until you get to that last thread cut. For example, a 32 pitch thread, which is very fine, they're recommending four passes. On a four pitch thread, they're recommending about 17 passes. So it's gonna vary. It's not gonna be one size fits all. It's going to vary depending on the pitch, the coarseness of the thread. The coarser the thread, the more passes you're gonna have. The finer the thread, the least amount of passes that you're gonna have. So there you go. We covered the four things that you need. Start, approach point, ending point, pitch or F value in your G92, and then to determine all those X values down. Now working through to get those X values down is gonna take a little bit of trial and error to understand. If you don't understand, leave a comment below. Find me up on, hit, hit me up on Instagram. My DMs are very active over there and I'll be able to walk you through it. When I first started, it was a little bit of a, a, work, a work in progress to figure out that exactly. I had to work with my tool manufacturer a little bit and luckily I had some colleagues to help me along. Also, CAD CAM are wonderful. So right now we're gonna take a look at our, um, that program running in the machine while we see a cut so you can see exactly what I mean. We'll be right back. So in this program here, we're calling up our tool, calling up our RPM. We go to our safe approach of 300 thousandths away in Z, engage our G92. The F is the pitch. The feed rate is the pitch, in this case, 083. And each line is cutting that thread deeper and deeper and deeper until we achieve that pitch diameter we want. And then we wrap it away, a safe spot away. There you have it. That's our G92 running. So in conclusion to this video, I hope you understand now what is a G92, what is a cam cycle, what's the benefit, and how we get there. The four puzzle pieces to this mystery. Approach point, ending point, feed rate, depth of cut per pass and X, either down or up, whether or not it's internal or external thread. I hope that you guys liked the video. I hope that it was informative. If there's any questions, I love replying to the comments. Leave a question, leave a comment, leave a concern. What do you think? Agree, disagree, good, bad, or ugly? We're here for it. And also you can find me, Luke, at Crusader Machining on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Find my stuff. Once again, thank you for watching the Lathe Lab, and we're going to see you next time to continue on our journey of programming.